Come on, baby. Please. Let's go! Yeah. Let's go, baby! Oh, you got Zach in the shot. We got Chase Adia back here with another camera. We got. Oh, I knew it. The makeup team got you spiffed up. You got three cameras rolling. Production guys are headed out. It's crazy, man. <laughs> Chris is trimming up his beard. He's got guys doing edging for him. And stuff. <laughs> but look at it. But look at your hair. I mean, not a not a thread out of place. <laughs> but can you imagine if I had the makeup team? Man, if you if you had the makeup team, it'd be over. Hey, <laughs> Chase, Chase requested some more videos from you too. Some financial tips, tax tips. Yeah, that's a good Zach's idea. Like, Zach's like, really? On top of everything I'm doing, really? <laughs> I'm <done>. so, uh, <laughs> let me just Let's do it. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode. We are joined today on the Zoom channel with Zach Miller, the People CFO from Intentional Growth Advisors. Zach, what's awesome, man, is I actually have people calling you the People CFO now. Man, you got that to catch on. The people I got it to CFO. catch on. I got it to catch on. <laughs> well, it could be a lot worse. I'll, I'll take it. I just know whatever tag you throw on me, you're going to market the heck out of it, and so it'll be out there. <laughs> Co-host, people, CFO. Oh, man. It's good stuff. All right, guys. This is, if you're just joining us for the first time on the show, this is a growth segment. It is sponsored by our coaching and consulting company, Intentional Growth Advisors. You can head over, check out the website, look us up, see what we're all about. But these are these are deep dive topics that Zach and I do. And if you're if you're just now joining us, like I said, we do deep dives here. We do growth nuggets interviews, documented episodes. So this is just kind of an extension of adding value to you as a business owner. Uh, real quick before we get into it, we do, Zach, have a new texting line where people can text us directly. The number for that is 913-357-5947. I've got it, Chase Adia. And it's not if you're worried about having mesothelioma or if you're worried about some... <laughs> <laughs> suing somebody yeah I, I sound like an attorney when i do that but text us you do it, call it all hammer and hammer hammer and hammer call iga <laughs> <laughs> oh man but hey here's the real re reason we want to we want to hang out with you guys we want to meet you on a personal level and we want to give you some behind the scenes access to some of the iga stuff we're doing little video clips motivation it's just another way we can be there for you so Make sure you do that. And then also, if you are a listener from Brian Fullerton's podcast, you're coming over from one of his episodes where we did an ad spot. Number one, we appreciate you being here. Um, we hope that you get a lot of value from this, and uh, we, we appreciate you giving us a shot. Make sure you leave us a review, though, if you're on Apple Podcasts, because we're giving away Cujo Yardware. We're giving away a free pair of shoes. We're giving away a safety kit by Ballard Products, and then we're also giving away a swag bag from Jobber. Now, I don't know what's in the swag bag, so I can't, I can't say that, but it's exciting. It could be a bag full of money because they haven't told me what's in it. So <laughs> make sure you leave the review. If you're not on Apple Podcast, go and just use the hashtag Lawn Care Leaders on Instagram and say, hey, I have my new listener from Brian Fullerton. Whatever you want to post. It could be a selfie picture. I don't care. But use that hashtag and we'll throw your name in the hat. So, all right, without further ado, the People CFO, Zach Miller, we're going to talk about what's the ultimate end goal today. Go for it. Woo, throwing it at me. I love it. Bam. The ultimate end goal. Boom. So today we want to, we want to dive into something that is uh, definitely goes beyond just running business, even your personal life, um, the ultimate end goal. Um, and I think kind of what Brett and I are wanting to get at here is, what is your life's mission? What is your life's vision? What keeps you grounded? What you're, we're all running this race, you know, what finish line are you trying to cross? So we kind of want to get into um, what keeps us motivated, you know, is it something that is spiritual? Is it something personal? Is it something with our family? And it could be a number of those factors. So Britt, why don't you start us off and kind of yeah. give us an, a, a good feel for you know, how you look at it and break it down and what, what, yeah. what's keeping you grounded here. No, that's good. That's good. Just like Zach said, we're trying to figure, we're, we're trying to give you guys just more perspective as we're at the end of the year. 
perspective on what's truly important and especially as you're starting to create goals and new year's resolutions for next year this is good stuff to keep in mind so i did want to start us off i've got a couple of verses here that i wanted to read um one is corinthians 10:31. whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do all for the glory of god next one is colossians 3:23. whatever you do work heartily as for the lord and not for men and the last one is i don't have i think it's jeremiah some i think it's jeremiah 23 11, but it's for i know the plans i have for you says the lord there are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope um that must be a different version because i always quote it to give you a hope and a future but i don't know don't want to change the bible um so with those things in in mind guys Zach and I just want to make sure as you're grinding, as you're, as your head's down and you're worried about all these problems that you're facing next year, or you're stressed out about a team member, or right now I know a lot of us are feeling cash flow pinches. Just make sure that you're keeping your end goal in mind and that you're keeping for, for a lot of our listeners Zach, they are Christian business owners. Right. And so we want to make sure that every decision is rooted in faith and bathed in prayer. And we want to make sure that we know when we're creating these goals, when we're creating this vision, that we're, we're still looking at it through the lens of scripture, still looking at it through a, a faith-filled human, not just, hey, what's going to get me the most profit? And so that's really what I want to wrestle with is we're all striving, we're all working hard, but make sure you have a vision that you're casting that is faith-filled, that is bathed in prayer, and make sure that at the end of the day, you can tell your wife, your kids, like, hey, yes, we ran a successful company, but more important than that, like, we had a personal why. You know, we, we started a foundation, or we gave back the extra time that we had and, and went and helped some nonprofit organization, or I, I raised up a kid and helped him along his journey just like somebody did that for me. And so that's what I really want to get at and, and touch on here a little more, Zach. Yeah, that's really good. I think that is something that we as Christian business owners and businessmen struggle with sometimes is to make that connection between being the most efficient and most profitable and how that fits into our calling. You know, are yeah. those two exclusive? Can they work together? How do we get them to work together? How do we stay grounded? Um, and I know for me, I, first of all, I love the verses you brought up, for especially Jeremiah, for the note, I know the plans I have for you. Um, for me, the lens, and I don't want to speak and say I always am always my eyes on the goal. You know, I get caught up in the weeds just, just like everybody else does. I struggle with stuff. But for me, the lens I try to look through, because it's always this lens, right? This Christian lens that we're taking in. We're trying to have the eyes of Christ. Um, for me, I try to think, does this further the kingdom? You know, mm -hmm. and what am I doing right now? Does that further the kingdom of Christ? Yeah. And I know that sounds general, but for me, that kind of means the kingdom is, you know, where these people, God has called us to a mission and God has given us all of these talents, these abilities, the blessing to live life. And with what I'm doing, am I furthering his kingdom for good or yeah. am I pulling it back? And yeah. so I think even something like trying to become a more profitable business, right? It mm -hmm. seems so worldly when you say it. But when you really get down to it, what it really means is just being the very best you can be day in and day out. Mm -hmm. It means being responsible with these resources that God has given us, call it your employees, your equipment, your money. Um, and I think God has called us to use our creative abilities and our talents to do great things for the world. And I think profit and doing well in business, yeah, it's a way to keep score in business, but it also shows, you know, the hard work you're doing, the, the giving back you're doing by paying employees, all of those things. And yeah. so at the end of the day, that's kind of my high level, you know, am I furthering the kingdom or am I not with what I'm doing? And mm -hmm. I try to step back and take that lens. So yeah. that, that's, that's awesome. one approach I take, Britt, if you want to kind of talk about one of your lenses or if that's kind of the way you look at it. I think that's awesome, man. I think that's awesome. Is it furthering the kingdom? And I think what's also cool with what you're saying is, everything we do on a daily basis can be kingdom work. Mm -hmm. That's on us. Yes. You know, we, we yes, don't leave, we don't leave yep. Sunday morning and then go about our day and then come back Sunday morning. No, there's, 
we spend 75 to 80 percent of time here on earth working so we're going to work so our work should be a reflection of christ all of our work all of our production all of our striving should point to god it should reflect our faith and i love how you're saying that it's kingdom work and you don't have to you don't have to start some nonprofit to do right. kingdom work. You can do kingdom work right where you're at today by doing more than you get paid for when you're on the mower and you're getting off and moving twigs out of Mrs. Jones' lawn or picking up trash or being nice to a stranger. Like we all leave little impressions wherever we go. And so I think that's what kingdom work is. What impression are you leaving on a daily basis as you go about your life? So I, I have a couple points here, Zach, and then I'll let you wrap it up. But one I would say is is have a personal mission, just like you're saying about mm -hmm. kingdom work. But if you have a personal mission or you have this idea of like, hey, this is what I would like my personal why to be, it's going to help you start to point towards that. Um, the other is create boundaries and protect the things that are most important to you. So whenever you are faced with a decision, make sure you have standards Make sure if you are a believer that you hold those standards with any business transaction, with any business decision, and you create boundaries like, hey, this is a line I'm not willing to cross, no matter what the opportunity is. So create boundaries, protect the things that are most important to you. And then lastly, this is a little bit off topic, but I think people will relate, but just communicate with your spouse and hold each other accountable. I, I know for me, I can often just go and do things, and it could be reflecting Christ, but it's not going in the direction that my family thought we were. So just make sure you're over-communicating things with your spouse. Make sure she's on the same page, and she can also, she or he, can be, can be your barrier, can be your sounding board, can be your roadblocks to make sure that they're holding you accountable. When, when things go wrong or when when there's a business ethics question at play, more often than not, your spouse who is above the situation can be like, you know what? No, that's, that's not what our family's about. I know we're in a pinch. I know we're struggling, but this is what Christ would want us to do for better or for worse. Yeah, that's, that's so good, Britt. And I, I kind of love what you, were, um, what you were saying in that even the day-to-day like, even the day -to -day minute stuff of life, like that is still a part of our calling. You know, like we spend 80% of our time doing this stuff. I would think that Christ would want us to do a pretty good job of it. Um, yeah. So I, I want guys, and I mean, I'm talking to myself here, especially looking into 2021. Um, don't overlook the roles that you have in this world. Even if, even if you're a guy who's not even, say you're a one man shop and you're not even leading a team yet. And you're saying, how can I impact the kingdom at work when it's just me? I'm a one man show. You know, what, what, how can I do anything more than just work? Well, what I would say is, God's given you that arena. You know, you have customers watching you. You have people in the community. You have friends who are saying, hey, Joe Schmo over there started his own business. Like, that's awesome. They're going to see your hard work, your generosity, your positive attitude. And those are all areas, like, they're all platforms that God has given you. It, like you said, it doesn't have to be that you're giving back the most or starting a foundation or something like this. There are so many ways that God has given us a platform and a calling and a chance to further the kingdom. So yep. Yep. when you're having those really tough days that are going to happen because life is hard and we care about stuff. So we get yep. really stressed. We get down. Like even if you're doing something you're passionate about, it's going to happen. You're going to go through a rut. And yep. what I'd say is try to stay grounded in some of these principles, wh whatever your why is, you know, we yep. hope it's spiritual. We hope it's through Christ, but dig deep because you are going to hit those valleys that the Bible mm -hmm. talks about and you need to be grounded in something to keep you pushing through. So, yep. Yep. Kind of Zach, I going into this year. Zach, I, I appreciate that, man. I, especially coming from you, and uh, I know I know you're going through a lot right now. You have a lot on your plate, and so hearing somebody like you say those things, I hope it resonates with our audience, and I hope it I hope it really impacts their their heart, not not just their profit, but their heart and what they're going to do with the profit and their business success. Um, we'll we'll wrap up here, Zach, and. Maybe I'll I'll splice this out or just take it all together. But I do want to like I want to brag on you because you've got a lot going on, man. You you've got <laughs> you you like 
you've been through rough situations with previous employers. Obviously, we can't name names, but we call Zach the people's CFO because he's a killer, man. He has audited hundreds of businesses. He's been a CFO of a major company. He's started a company, Intentional Growth Advisors. He's a new dad. He is a husband. He's got a newborn baby at home, and the, the guy's just he, – he just told me off air he got like an hour of sleep last night. So he's got a lot going on, and I just want to brag on him and tell him he's doing really good. He's making it, and he is doing kingdom work. But I, I want you to touch on this, Zach. I, I said all this because I want to prop you up for this next question. You're, you're a killer. You're doing big things, but you've got a lot going on in the background. And you've got, you've got things that you're stressed about. You've in the past had coworkers that you didn't agree with or were like on the verge of like verbally abusive and just a lot of stuff going on. What can you say to guys whenever they're going through that? Like they, they may be at an employer that they hate or maybe they're going through just really, really tough interactions with team members. How do you how yeah. do you keep a faith filled approach? How do you keep the end game in mind? And then also, how do you stay motivated? Yeah, well, first, Britt, thanks for those kind words. Honestly, um, I it means a lot to me coming from you. I have a lot of respect for you, and those things mean a lot. And it's yeah, it's when you when you're in the weeds and you're going through a lot in life, and it, it's all good stuff. You know, having kids, being busy at work. I mean, all you guys are doing these kinds of things, being busy at home. Um, th those are the things that are important in life. And what I've tried to teach myself, because I would get so stressed about things tight, you know, pressing so hard on myself, and then I would totally pull back and go, well, I shouldn't even be stressed at all. I think, I think first of all, it's okay to be stressed about stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I've actually been reading a book by, this sounds funny, Matthew McConaughey, but he wrote a really good book because <laughs> he's a successful guy. But he talks about, like, being stressed, it, it's okay. It means you give a crap about something right? It's yeah. okay. It's okay yeah. to, to go to work and being stressed about the employees or being stressed about not doing well. But at the end of the day, um, you, have to, you have to have a deeper purpose or that stress will eat you up because mm -hmm. you're never going to be perfect. There's always going to be some type of pain, hurt, stress there. It's never going to be perfect. And if you always are looking to the out, to the end game, your whole life's journey will be over in a flash and you'll get to the end and say, you know, I missed the journey. And so yeah. I think we have to try to remember whatever it is that keeps you eyes up thinking about something, a greater purpose. You have to draw on that because that's the only way you're going to get through these times and still enjoy them while you're in them, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, like just great. take you, for example, Brett, you know, your first few years of green again, I've heard your stories, man. It was, it was tough. <laughs> you and Brooke yeah. are knocking on doors. People are laughing at you, making jokes, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm sure in that moment, all you wanted was out. Like, this is the worst. I just want to be done. But I know that you embrace those challenges because you still do when things are hard. And now looking back, I'm sure you're thankful that you were grounded from the start and that you, you relished in the journey. I mean, when you tell stories, you look back with fondness. You know, you're yeah. not looking back going, I'm just glad I survived. You know, yeah. and that's something yeah. that it's easy for, it's easy for us people to do is go, I survived and made it. Well, your whole yeah. life's going to turn into that. So. Mm, that's dude. kind of what, what I would say to guys Dr draw deep on whatever it is you have and like I said if it's spiritual that's the, probably the best base you can get that's the route Britt and I go we, you know Christ our savior is what keeps us grounded but we all go through crap every one of us even if we're doing great in life and you yeah. got to have something to get you through bro that's that's beautiful like that is that's awesome that, that's really really well said and don't try to one up me. I, I was bragging on you, and then you tried to brag on me. I will fire right back at you and brag on. I'll, I'll just keep going this back and forth. <laughs> I mean, come on, I can hit it right back across the net. Hey, how about the Matthew oh, McConaughey oh. book, though? Right on, right Are you on. Ready? I'm. I've got Are an hour ready? and a half Audible. Are you doing Audible? No, I'm. I'm reading it, but I'm about halfway through it. And okay, I. I honestly Bro, felt, you need to go I, and listen. You need to listen to it when he tells the stories he is such a good oh. storyteller from all his experience i'm there i'm like Holy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what's your what's one of your it. favorite ones 
Well, well, first of all, I gotta say, when I read it, I literally try to read it in my mind in his voice because he's such a good storyteller. <laughs> yes. You're exactly right. And I want to say, yes. too, I was self-conscious to even bring that book up because I didn't want people to be like, oh, Matthew McConaughey. But the dude has done great things in his life, and he's Off very Off the charts smart. He's so smart. Yes. Yeah. But what I what what it's caught me, and I would suggest, you know, owners out there, if you want a fun book to read, that'll you'll get something out of the Green Light by Matthew McConaughey's a book because he's extremely disciplined and extremely grounded. You know, yeah. he has a strong faith, and that's the only way you can make it through Hollywood. Otherwise, you'd yeah. never make it. But yeah. man, his stories about his fighting his father, like getting in fist fights and stuff. Yeah. Just <laughs> one of my favorites is the one where <laughs> his dad. And I think his his older brother or somebody right. are hanging out, and they're they're all drinking, and and then they get in like a pissing match, yep. and they say like, "Can you can you pee yes. over Tommy's head?" <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna tell the whole story, but that story had me rolling. I was like, "Dude, this is like it reminds me of something that my some of my family members would do." Yeah, that's a that's a doubt or maker thing. His dad a, literally yeah. went and got his son and made. Made him pee over somebody's head. <laughs> Pulled him out of bed at like two in the morning. Drove him 160 miles back oh. to his uncle's house. Hey, he drank two beers on the way back. All right, this is spiraling out of control from the the faith based talk we were we were it on it originally. But if if you go read the book, you'll get it because Matthew is, and that's what I was saying. He. I love when he said that. He's like, being stressed in life is fine. You give a crap about something. Yes. You know, yep. you, you can't expect life to just be roses all yep. the time. Like it's going to happen. <laughs> yep. No, that's so true. I, I highly recommend it. It's also a good book for you business owners that you kind of want to be productive, but you also just want to get your mind disengaged on your way home from work. Um, it's a great way just to, to laugh, to learn and disengage as you, you need a buffer from, from work going into home. So that's what I've been using it for. Uh, I want to wrap it up here by bragging on Zach and one-upping him. But I, I think what Zach is also saying is consistency. One thing that Zach portrays day in and day out is consistency. And I actually had the word consistency, the word that I talked on at our Christmas party. And it's because if you look at one snapshot of this year, it's the worst year you've ever been through. And then if you're in the service industry, you could look at another snapshot of your profit in September, and it's the best year on, on record. And so true. one thing that I realized is the people that were consistent, that showed up day in and day out amidst the peaks and valleys are the ones who win. That's what progress looks like. That's what success looks like. And if you truly want to know why Zach wins, He's consistent day in and day out because just like he was saying, life happens in between the peaks and in between the valleys. Memories are still made and relationships are still developed when there's a peak and there's a valley. And the only way to make it from one valley to the next peak is to remain consistent. And uh, my buddy Zach has, has done that flawlessly. He's doing it now. I would I wouldn't say it's like he's in a huge valley as far as relationships and whatnot, but he's got a lot going on. He's got, he's got a young baby boy, Hux. He's got a spouse. He's got multiple jobs with multiple relationships, trying to grow you business owners out there. And it's tough. And so he's, he's consistent though, day in and day out. So we want to wrap this up here, guys. And uh, Zach, you got any final words? BD, I'll tell you what, I appreciate it again. If I had another 20 minutes, I'd brag on your beard of how good it looks for the next 20 minutes. Bro, quit trying to one up. Don't quit. <laughs> uh, Dude, my... that, I wish all you listeners, I hope the listeners have watched the Lawn Care Leaders Insta stories to watch <laughs> the growth stages of Britt's beard because it's incredible. <laughs> it's beautiful. But no, guys, on a more serious note, I, I do want to say I hope you guys don't just overlook this podcast. I hope that. Um, it's, it's not so much we're trying to give you advice. We just want to relate and connect with you and say, hey, 2021, we're all looking at goal planning. We're all looking back on 2020 and seeing what we did right, seeing what we did wrong. We're all probably stressed about something coming up. But at the end of the day, hopefully we all can latch on to something that keeps us grounded, keeps our mind up, keeps our vision, and uh, propels us all together in 2021 to have a great year. So that's yep, yep. kind of what I'd say, the final words.
Zach, could we could we bribe our audience and get you to send them a a personal video with some some IGA info or tax tips if they text us? Would you would you do that? I like it, Brett. Put me on the spot, so I have to do it. So yes, I can. Because <laughs> we're live now, so it looks like yeah. If you guys <laughs> what what some I do have a few things prepared of um, year end. We'll call it year end. Time hiding up or bookkeeping type stuff just to get you prepped for next year. Um, I can put together a quick little video that hopefully gets you owners thinking about, you know, cross your T's, dot your I's for the end of the year and get you rolling into 2021. Yep. So if here's what we're going to do, guys. If you're a listener and you want a personalized text from Zach in video form, all you need to do is text Zach, Z-A-C-H, to 913-357-5947. But all right, guys, we've been going a hot minute on this growth segment. Hope you've had fun. I know it's been fun for Zach and I, and we will be back with you soon.